Another solar storm is incoming. Northern lights to be visible tomorrow, Wednesday. We seem to be having a tremendous amount of uptick in CMEs and solar flares and solar storms. And this is uh, to be expected of, of changes having to do with the sun going into the grand solar minimum. And uh, there's going to be a tremendous difference in our uh, electromagnetic um, partnering with the sun. And there's also a difference going to be an uptick in uh, earthquake and volcanic activity as well. And this has to do with a recent update on, um, let me see if I can find that site, from Heart Math, when we talked about the interconnectedness of the uh, solar activity, volcanic eruptions, and earthquakes, weather and even weather, of course, and cycles on Earth. Uh, extreme cold, differences in the uh, atmospheric rivers, volcanic eruptions and earthquake upticks. Amazing. Um, I'll try and uh, find the link to that video and you can watch that if you'd like to learn more. Uh, now, the solar minimum is here. This is according to space weather. But even now, strangely beautiful auroras are dancing around the poles. Uh, deep inside the Arctic Circle, the expert guides of Aurora Holidays in Utskochi, Finland, can help you chase them. Now we have a solar wind incoming. A southern hole in the sun's atmosphere is spewing a stream of solar wind towards Earth. Estimated time of arrival, April 4th. Minor geometric, uh, geomagnetic storms and Arctic auroras are possible when the gaseous material arrives. And we have Aurora alerts. You can get them from here if you have, if you want uh, emails or uh, SMS texts from this link on space weather, I'll leave for you. Solar minimum is a terrible time to blow up a satellite. This is what India has done. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, there's a 44% chance that the pieces of that satellite are going to be radiating higher up from Earth and towards the ISS. Now you can imagine a 44% chance that I, those pieces will hit the ISS is not at all good. Um, you know, they're so proud of themselves that they blew up their satellite. The thing is, how did you, how could you not foresee where those pieces would be heading? That is totally, totally, uh, inconsiderate. It's stupid, actually. Now, uh, they're saying it's a terrible time to blow up a satellite. If you're going to blow a satellite to bits, solar minimum is a terrible time to do it. The Indian Space Agency is grappling with this important truth today as debris from their March 27th anti-satellite weapon test spreads throughout space. As many as 6,500 pieces of the microsat, our Earth observation satellite, are now circling Earth, according to a simulation created by analytical graphics concerning all this. During solar minimum, happening now, Earth's upper atmosphere cools and contracts, sharply reducing aerodynamic drag that causes satellites to decay. Indeed, in 2019, the temperature of the thermosphere is close to a space age record low. This could double or triple the time required for fragments of debris to sink into our atmosphere in order to disintegrate. The smallest fragments in high orbits may remain aloft for years. This event brings to mind the Chinese ASAT test in 2007, which also occurred near solar minimum and created a significant debris field. Uh, if we all saw the, the uh, Sandra Bullock gravity movie. Uh, yeah, the pieces that were hitting the uh, their spacecraft. Okay, the Chinese pieces of the Chinese ASAT. Now that test. Now going back to this, that test, however, was conducted at an altitude near 865 kilometers. India's test at 300 kilometers created an upward spray of the debris that could threaten the International Space Station only 100 kilometers overhead, 
according to statements made by NASA's Administrator Jim Bridenstine during an April 1st town hall meeting in Washington, D.C. And he said that's terrible, terrible thing to create an event that sends debris in an apogee, meaning away from Earth, that goes above the International Space Station. Even small pieces of debris can cause problems as they fly around Earth like bullets moving at 17,000 miles per hour. Officials say there are 60 trackable fragments of microset R measuring 10 centimeters across or larger. So 10 centimeters like um, the size of your finger. And they're going around the earth like bullets moving at 17,000 miles an hour. So of the total, 24 ended up in orbits with high points or apogees above the 400 kilometer altitude of the ISS. Low solar activity, which could last for years as the solar cycle ponderously swings through its minimum phase, will help keep those fragments there aloft, prolonging their threat to other satellites and even the ISS. Now, April is the best month for uh, zodiacal lights, they say. Tonight, when the sun does uh, go down and the glow of the sunset fades away, another glow may take its place. The zodiacal light it stretches upward from the western horizon, forming a pale luminous triangle visible from places with exceptionally dark skies. Satu Juvonen uh, photographs a uh, phenomenon from eastern Finland. You can see that image here. Um, now, okay, so we have our solar wind coming in. Uh, solar wind is coming in at 387.3 kilometers per second, density 9.5 protons per square centimeter. X-ray solar flares, six hour maximum from AU 2309 sunspot and 24 hours from AO 23.9 again. And uh, sunspot AR 2737 is quiet and poses no threat for strong solar flares. The spot's magnetic polarity identifies it as a member of an old solar cycle 24. So sunspot number 17. So we have that coming in. Um, solar storm coming in, uh, heading towards our Earth. Experts have warned the resulting cosmic particles will barrage our planet in the coming days. And you know what that means. That also means uh, a major quake. We saw that just a couple of days ago. We had another solar flare coming in. And the same day, I think, we had a, a, a 5.4 magnitude in Greece alone, let alone other areas in the Ring of Fire. Now, a solar storm heading towards Earth, resulting in cosmic particles barraging our planet in the coming days. The hole, known as the coronal hole, has opened on the southern part of the sun's atmosphere, releasing cosmic particles into the cosmos, into the universe. Sunspots are the patches of the darkness on the sun, which are caused by underlying magnetism beneath the surface. But sometimes that magnetism bubbles up and is released in the form of solar flares, or coronal mass ejections, CMEs as we call them which spew cosmic particles into space. And in this case, they're facing us. That's why they're coming into our direction. Holes like this are common, but researchers have warned the stream of solar particles could come smashing into Earth's atmosphere. And when they do, like they will uh, today, tomorrow, the day after, people in the upper reaches of the northern hemisphere could be treated to northern lights. The other thing is that a lot of people complain of migraines and headaches or feeling uh, somehow that their frequency is off. Uh, and that's also, of course, uh, evidenced by scientists that that does take place. So uh, the researchers warned the stream of subtle particles could smash into Earth's atmosphere, which will they, be do they will be doing the next few days. Cosmic forecasting website Space Weather, as we said, said the southern hole in the sun's atmosphere is facing Earth, spewing a stream of solar wind in our direction. Estimated time of arrival, April 3rd. 
Wednesday, minor geomagnetic storms in Arctic auroras are possible when this gaseous material arrives. Just as we read, auroras, which include northern lights, aurora borealis, and the southern lights, aurora australis, australis, are caused when the solar particles hit our atmosphere. As the magnetosphere gets bombarded by these solar winds, we see the stunning blue lights. It's not just blue lights, it's, just, it's like the lights of a rainbow. Uh, I don't know if any of you have ever witnessed them. I was lucky enough to witness them when I was young, living in Canada. We lived in Montreal. It was a Friday night of a winter night, and it was just stunning to see all this waving above you like a beautiful silent curtain. It's just magnificent. So stunning lights can appear as that layer of the atmosphere deflects the particles. And for the most part, the Earth's magnetic field does protect us from this barrage of radiation, but solar storms can affect satellites. Base technology and solar wind can heat the Earth's outer atmosphere, causing it to expand. And this can affect satellites in orbit, potentially leading to a lack of GPS. It affects mobile phones, uh, satellite disks. Uh, additionally, a surge of particles can lead to high currents in the magnetosphere, which can lead to higher than normal electricity in the power lines resulting in electrical transformers and power station blowouts and a loss of power. The higher amounts of radiation also leave people vulnerable to cancer. This is on Express UK. I'll leave links below for you for this face-based weather as well. Thank you. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.